see a small eastern cottontail there. Now that's not our target animal, but it's always good to keep your eyes open and see what's around you. episode of our trapping series. Today we're going to kind of continue on from where we left off with the snares the other day and we're going to cover the squirrel pole or leaning pole however you want to call it. Now the premise here is squirrels are opportunists, lazy for lack of a better word, and they're going to take the path of least resistance. So instead of climbing that vertical face up and down on the tree, they're going to in theory take this slider angle, this 45 degree angle, for the easier path down to the ground. So what you do is you provide them with that path of least resistance, you line it with your snares, and hopefully if you're lucky, it'll bring you a meal. Okay, so what we want to do first here is we want to take our cable, or our wire, whatever you're using, we want to make sure we're going to have plenty to tie this off around this log. And then we're just going to cut it off with plenty to make our loop here. Alright, so now I have my handy dandy little SAK, you could use a multi-tool, you could actually just crimp this back and forth till it broke, you could smash it with a rock, you could do a lot of things here. Okay, so now that we have our cable cut here, we're going to do things just a little bit different than we did the other day. Now the other day was using smaller diameter wire, today we're using a multi-strand 30 pound picture hanging wire, that's all I had in my kit today. Uh, so that's what we're going to go with. Now this is a bigger gauge, so if we put that lock in there, the squirrel is more than likely not going to be heavy enough to, to bend that wire down on the lock to lock the snare in anyway. So we're just going to make a straight snare here, a straight loop. And then the idea here is most of the time with this system, the squirrel will get ensnared and when he's struggling he'll kind of fall off the edge and be there hanging. So if all his body weights pushing against that snare, more than likely he's not going to be able to escape anyway. If you can put a lock on there, it's probably a better idea, but in this case we're not going to because this is all we have and sometimes you're stuck just working with what you have. So we're going to take a small stick, just a little bit bigger around than our cable here, and we're going to wrap that cable around there. We're not going to wrap it around twice like we did the other day. We're just going to wrap it around there once, and then we're going to twist it down. Sorry about the camera angle there. And you're going to end up with that, just your cable wrapped around your stick. Make sure and work with this good. Make sure you got a good solid wrap here. Squirrels aren't that heavy, but they're going to be struggling. And you can just break that stick off. And then you can see you have your loop there, just a little bit bigger than the diameter of your wire. You run that through the loop and you have your snare. I'm going to go ahead and make a few more of those up off camera here to save a little bit of time and then we'll start setting them up on our squirrel pole. Alright, I got six snares made up here. We got a pole probably about 12 feet long. Now you probably could set a few more than that. You could set less than that if you wanted. That's really up to you. Um, today we're just going to set six on this. I want to go over a couple things here real quick. I've been out in this area quite a bit lately. I've, this is the area where I've been shooting a lot of these trapping videos. And I have noticed a lot of squirrel activity in this direct area. We got a circle of probably about a dozen silver maple trees here. And I've seen a lot of squirrels going up and down this tree right behind me. That's why I selected it. That's what you're going to want to do. You're going to look for that animal sign, the animal that you're after. You're looking for their tracks. You're looking for signs that they've been around. Now, like I said, I've, I've visibly seen animal sign on, going up and down this tree. And around these silver maples right here, there's no, there's no nut trees. There are a few walnut trees dispersed about these woods. But there's a lot of old walnut shells laying all over the ground right here. I mean, you just see 
I see probably about a dozen of them from where I'm standing right now. So that tells me the squirrels are, are coming to this area. This is probably a habitat area for the squirrels. They like the silver maple. Small mammals in general like the silver maple because they develop hollow spots, cavities high up in the tree that allows them to take habitat in. So like I said, you're going to want to find an area that has visible animal sign if you're going to use this practically. Another thing you could do with this squirrel pole, if you was in a longer term situation, this was a good point brought up in a recent video by Steve Davis over at Woodcrafter 1976. He stated that you could set this out a few days ahead of time if you was in a longer term situation. Let the squirrels get accustomed to this being here using this path to get up and down from the tree. Then you show up one morning, line it with your snares, and uh, they're a lot less likely to notice something's awry. So that's actually a pretty good point Steve brought up about that. So always keep that in mind as well. Now you can see here I've left some of the branches on here. I left one up at the top to kind of help stabilize this whole deal. So I'll probably leave those up, those higher ones on there. And you can leave some of these off to the side here, like this is a good one here. Maybe break this one off. But you could put, leave this one here, and then maybe put your snare right up above it. They're not going to go off, be able to go off to this side. There's a little bit of obstruction over here. So as they're crawling up here, have your snare right above that. It'll keep them in the center. It'll kind of funnel them right into your snare. One thing for sure you don't want is these pieces hanging down like this. You don't want anything on the bottom side of this because once the squirrel comes over the side and starts hanging, if he's got something, one of these branches or something to grab a hold of, then he's going to be able to work that snare loose, especially since we're not putting a lock on it. So we don't want to give him anything on the bottom side here to grab hold of. So I'm going to get the old Laplander out, make short work of some of these branches that are on the very bottom side of this log, and I'll be back with you here in just a minute. Alright, so I have all my little branches cut off of the bottom here, so nothing for the squirrel to grab onto. Another thing that's kind of important to note here is when you're starting at the bottom, and the same way it goes for the top, when you're working at the ends here, you want to set your first snare up high enough to where when that squirrel's hanging, he's not going to be able to touch the ground. So I'm going to put that up here where I know whenever he's hanging down off the bottom here, he's going to be at least mostly suspended off the ground. So we're going to start about right here. And this snare is the one that I cut for you guys, and it is actually way long, but that's okay. If uh, we get lucky, we'll be able to reuse these. And uh, might need a longer snare for another application somewhere. So uh, we're just going to wrap that around pretty good there. Squirrels aren't real strong, so I think them eight wraps there will probably do it. And then we're just going to kind of manipulate that wire. You're going to want about three fingers, about two and a half inches, for the squirrel's head to pass through. And you just kind of bend that, that wire around the way you want it. lower it down just a little. Good thing about the wire is it's pretty easy to uh, move wherever you want. Inch, inch and a half up off of the surface of your log. Hopefully you can see that there. Okay, so snare number one's on. I'm just going to put one up about a foot and a half up from it. Do the same thing. <laughs> Here we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Six 
six snares set along this pole. Now you could put a few more, you could put a couple less if you wanted, that's up to you, like I said. Now, one thing I want to mention, a couple things I want to mention, is this bottom one, like I said before, is high enough to where if the squirrel becomes ensnared, he's going to be hanging in the air. He may be able to barely touch the ground, but he's not going to be able to take his body weight off this and back it up to escape. We, remember, we don't have locks on these. With the locking snare, as soon as that secondary loop crimps down on top of that wire, it locks it in place where it can't back up. But with these, you don't have that benefit. So you want to keep the body weight of that animal on that. And like I said before, you could put locking snares on here. There's nothing wrong with that. I just simply didn't because the squirrel's not going to be heavy enough to be able to lock that secondary loop on this thick wire anyway. And another thing, earlier when I cut this off long, you can see here how I have quite a bit of wire between where it's wrapped around here at the pole and then my snare loop. It's not really that bad, but the more wire you have here, the less sturdy this is going to be. If you have a shorter piece here, it's not going to bounce around near as much when that squirrel nudges it. Say if he doesn't hit it just center and he bounces, hits it off to the side, if you got this really long, it's going to flop around a lot more than if it's short. That's just something to keep in mind. And then basically at the top we have the same deal. It's far enough away from the trunk. Now you could put a couple more snares up here, no problem, and still be safe. But you can see here that if the squirrel gets ensnared in the snare, he's going to be hanging down here. We've got about three feet between him and the tree. He can't reach over there and grab a hold of that tree. There's nothing on the bottom, no branches or anything for him to grab a hold of and back that off. Now you could bait this. If you had some bait, if he's carrying some peanut butter with you, you could put a little bit of peanut butter in between these. That would definitely help. You could find some nuts out here, just whatever, whatever food that squirrels might eat you have readily available in whatever region that you're in. Now if you didn't have this fancy snare wire and you were subjected to using natural cordage or even cordage you might be carrying around with you, there are still ways you can set this up. You can either make a pretty good slit on either side, on both sides of this, this pole here. Then you can cram a couple sticks in them slits, tie your cordage around just like you do your snare, make your snare loop, and then use the two sticks to, to secure the cordage up here in your loop and that'll give you kind of a, a funnel here to where the squirrel will walk in between kind of like with a blind blind snare you'll have like a framework here and the squirrel will want to walk between there and then you know hopefully get caught in your bank line or your paracord inner strands whatever you're using wire is a lot more handy because it's malleable you can just kind of manipulate it however you want it put it wherever you want it so that's why a lot of people prefer wire but you can use cordage on this as well I want to take a quick minute. Thank you all for coming along with me. Had a real good time going over the squirrel pole with you all. Uh, squirrel pole looks like a pretty good option if you're stuck in a bad spot or if you're in a long-term uh, self-reliance situation. Um, pretty good option for not spending a lot of calories to gain some calories. So uh, always keep that in the back of your mind. Um, there's a couple different setups you can do with this. Of course, you can do this at the angle. You can also do a horizontal setup, which... Uh, Usually, from what I've seen, is, is normally baited in between the snares, but instead of having this at the 45 degree angle, you would basically just have it horizontal and jam it between two forks of a tree, or you would could jam it in the crotch of a tree, or you could tie it to the side of a tree and just give the squirrels an area to walk along. You put bait in between your snares here, and they go in there to get the bait, and basically same deal. They just get stuck in your snare, and hopefully they're waiting for you there at breakfast time. Just a friendly little reminder guys, a lot of these traps we're covering in this series are illegal in most states in the, in the United States and it's fine to go out and practice these things and get a, get a feel for how they work, but you don't want to leave these sets actively placed. Not only could it be very illegal, but you could harm an animal needlessly, you could, you could you know, smash some little girl's kitty cat on accident, something like that. We don't want to do anything, we don't want to cat, you know, we don't want to kill any non-target animals and we don't want to be irresponsible when we're out using our time in the woods. Let's be stewards of the woods, guys. Take a garbage bag with you. You see crap that other people have left laying around. Go ahead and pick a little bit of it up and carry it out with you. It ain't going to kill you. Let's keep our woods clean, guys, so uh, our children can enjoy them and future generations can enjoy the same things that we do. This is Kevin.
Thanks for watching.